Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to your three choices pick a card reading. Each one of these piles has three cards in it and each card is going to represent one of your three choices. So if you've been trying to decide between three different things or if you feel like you have three separate paths laid out before you, go ahead and assign a number one, two, and three to each of those choices. And then we're going to see which one of those choices looks to be your best bet. So go ahead, pick your pile. It's pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four, five, and number six. All right, pile number one. Let's see what we got here. For you guys, option number one is your dreams need a practical plan. Full moon in Taurus. So that sounds okay, right? Your, your option number one might be you have a pie in the sky kind of dream or you have a kind of really abstract ambition or something you're really working towards. And it looks like it could come into fruition, but you need to do something. You need to take practical steps, you know, make a list of the specific things you need to do. And you can't just sit around dreaming about writing a book, right? You can't just like, oh, I'm a writer and I have all these ideas for a book and I work on it some, some, sometimes. But if you want to get that book actually published, you need to sit down for hours every day and write and start shopping around to figure out how to actually publish the book. So if you guys go with option number one, you need to take practical steps. <laughs> Your option two, nothing will come of this situation. Void, of course, moon. Uh, that's pretty clear. Option number two, I mean, nothing's going to come of it. That That's it. That, it. That's it right there. Uh, you could, you know, if you really disagree with that advice, you could keep trying anyway. But likely you'll just keep hitting a brick wall and you'll find that nothing will will pan out if you try that. So I can't recommend option two. Option three is show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. That is definitely your your most auspicious card here. This is saying, you know, not only are you being invited to be yourself, be your most authentic self, and to you're also being invited to put yourself out there. This is like, yes, kind of go for it, you know, because show the world the real you. That is such an invitation to write that book, ask that person out on a date, go on that journey, move to that new city, take a trip. Obviously, if you're watching this, when I post this video in like March 2020, travel probably isn't in the cards for you. <laughs> uh, but down the line, when things get back to normal, um, I think option three is your best bet. There's definitely an invitation here to, to put yourself out there and go for it. Okay, pile two. Let's see what we have here. Your option number one is what do you need to release? Waxing moon. Now, that's not the most promising card. It suggests that option one entails a certain amount of self-reflection and figuring out what's blocking you, what's holding you back. There's some kind of emotional baggage here, maybe like physical baggage. Maybe that's a person. Maybe that's a bunch of crap in your house. Like if you've been hoarding, like not, not like really bad hoarding, but if you have a bunch of clutter and you need to do your spring cleaning, um, it, it that comes to mind because literally before I got up to film this, I was sitting on my balcony thinking about how I stress eat to like like emotionally pad myself. And I was thinking about how some people clutter up their house with stuff. And I've never really understood that because I like a really clean, uh, like bare bones, minimalist, min minimalist style house. But some people think clutter up their house because that's another form of emotional padding. And it sort of amounts to the same thing as stress eating. Um, if that's relevant to you, uh, you know, that's just, that's just what's coming up here. So there's something either like a habit or a person or emotions, something that would need to go in order for option one to manifest. There's something blocking you there and you need to let go of something if you really want to go for option one. Option two, balance spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces. So option two is looking pretty good for you, but again, there's a bit of a balancing act there. Either you have not been like pursuing your spirituality in a way that is most beneficial to you. Um, this really, this is so personal. It's actually kind of hard to talk about it. Like if you're into meditating, maybe you haven't been meditating enough. Uh, 
If you like to do ritual work, maybe you've let that slide. Maybe you've let distractions um, throw you off your path. Um, if you work closely with deities and you like to pray, uh, you know, have you let that slide too? Have you not been connecting? You have, but this could also be the other way is uh, maybe you've gone completely off the deep end down some like spiritual rabbit hole and you're getting like really ungrounded and you're kind of losing, losing touch with your body and losing like losing touch with the earth. So you might need to bring it back down and uh, come back down into your body a little bit. So yeah, I think just to keep in mind, if you go for option two, you need to be balancing both halves of your existence. Option three, step out of your comfort zone, north node. Okay, so <laughs> I'm actually going to say that this north node, option three, is your clear winner because we all need to be leaning into our north node, even though option three might actually look like your most challenging option or the one that you your egoic self wants to do the least, the one that you're like, no, like this is going to suck. This is going to be so difficult. This is really the opposite of what I want. This is like the opposite of what I'm good at. This is, you know, this is a complete departure from my previous life. Unfortunately, that's just how North Node journeys go, <laughs> uh, but they're always worth it in the end. You know, it's like a Saturn return for, for me. My Saturn return really propelled me into my North Node and it sucked for like three years. But now on the other side of it, uh, I realized how beneficial it really was. So really all three of your options suggest of an underlying issue of needing to go through introspection and personal growth and find figuring out what is your most ideal trajectory and how you need to get there. So I would lean into your north node, go for option three, even if that's going to suck. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have more uh, like superficially good news, but your the north node, if you're working on your north node, that is really the best news that you could be getting, even if it's not fun. So have fun with your north node, guys. <laughs> Okay, pile number three. Your option number one, full moon, surrender to the divine. So <laughs> option one looks great for you guys. I would go with option one, but let's see what else we got here. Um, I guess the only thing is with this full moon card is you might be feeling kind of like head fog, like you got cotton candy in your head and a little bit confused. Uh, at least that's how full moons feel to me. Or you might be feeling like way amped up. Full moon's going to do that too. Um, also, option one, I feel like the, like the universe is going to take you in this direction regardless of any of your you know egoic choices because things tend to manifest on full moons kind of whether you try to make them happen or not. They're just going to kind of work out and surrender to the, the divine. You're going to be going with that feminine flow flowing with events. And if you kind of lean into the wave, then everything's going to work out around you. So I have a feeling that option one is going to be coming your way, like ready or not <laughs> kind of deal. But let's see option two. This energy is gaining momentum. Again, guys, I think events seem to be out of your control at this point. I don't even if you're asking about these three options that you think you have, they might not be choices that you actually get to make. These are events coming down from universal consciousness and from your higher self. And I think events are kind of out of your control. So option two also seems to be on its way. I don't know what kind of things you guys were asking about. If it's possible that option one and two could be happening at the same time uh, <laughs> or can both can both happen, you might be getting both of those. Let's see about option three, a time to give rather than take new moon in Virgo. Yeah, that's more energy to me of going with the flow and stepping outside of your, your egoic self. Overall, guys, you are really being asked to dial down your egoic, like mental decision making and go with the flow. Although um, to give you a little bit like of a specific clear answer here. I got to say that surrender to the surrender to the divine full moon option one. 
that is your, your clearest, best option here. So if you really need a specific answer, I'm definitely going to go with option one. But as I've been saying, your whole reading, things are going, things are like flowing around you and taking shape behind the scenes in a way that you can't control. So don't like stress too much about this decision because I think it's actually already been made for you like on a higher level and you're like in a boat going down a river and you're being taken to your best destination even if the journey might not seem that fantastic but you're going to be getting there Okay, pile number four. For you, option number one is your hard work is paying off, new moon in Capricorn. That's a good sign, guys. <laughs> if there's something you've been like really working hard towards, some kind of project or just trying to get yourself out of debt or trying to get established in a career or get some kind of project underway, that's a sign that keep going with that keep working on that it's paying off like don't give up now don't give up now okay option number two meditate and contemplate new moon in pisces um so in contrast with card your option number one option number two is not something you need to do anything about except kind of let it sit let it let it flow option two is happening regardless of any choices you make yeah, that, that Pisces energy. There's nothing you need to do about this except, you know, meditate on it. And if you don't meditate, just like, just contemplate it. Think about it. Imagine it. This is, I think, uh, like a pocket of energy that is like sitting there, kind of shimmering around, stewing a little bit. And I don't think you need to make any decisions about it. Just let that sit there, at least for now. Option number three, don't let your past hold you back, south node. Okay, so option number three, since that's south node, that's not something we want to be. <laughs> like, we don't want to go back. You don't want to evolve backwards. You don't want to regress back into your south node. With your south node, you want to take, you want to embody the highest evolution of those south node energies without, like, sitting in that energy forever you want to be moving into your north node. So, you know, if you need to look that up, go ahead and run your chart and find out what your south node is, what house it's in, what sign it's in, because that'll give you a big clue about what kind of habits and tendencies you need to let go of, but also what your strengths are and what is your, like, your strong foundation. So use your south node energy as a foundation, but don't go back to it. You don't want to evolve backwards, guys. So option number three, there's definitely like something here that was a foundation for you, but you don't want to go back. Like the first example I can think of is if this was a relationship, if option three, maybe like if someone is trying to get back to go together with their ex, don't get back together with them because that is evolving backwards. That is going back. There's probably a lot you learned from that relationship. Maybe you're still friends with that person. And there's definitely a lot you can take away from that relationship. You don't need to look back on it with with pain and regret and all that bad stuff, just take what was useful from it. Take the lessons that you learned, take the friendships that you gained, whatever, and but move onwards and upwards. Don't go back. If that's a job, don't go back to your old job. Don't move back to that old city. Don't go backwards. Just take what you learned and move on. So for you guys, clearly your best option is option number one, Newman and Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. Keep leaning into that because you guys are almost there and it's going to work out for you in the long run. Okay, pile number five. Let's see what we got here. Option number one, bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. Well, if you guys are asking about a relationship, <laughs> that is a really good indication that option one is the way to go. Option two, a time for healing. Balsamic moon. This is really an invitation to slow down and do some introspection. Figure out what needs to go, what you want to keep. And if there are any like 
any issues you need to address, any emotional baggage, any physical problems, like with option two, you need to be, things need to be addressed, I think, in order for them to heal. I think option two, it might be something that you work on temporarily, but of course healing doesn't, like healing one specific thing doesn't go on forever. It, you, you know, you let your broken leg heal and then you start walking on it again. So yeah, this is going to be really different for a lot of people. Just remember with option number two, something needs to be healed here. And I think if you put a little, little bit of attention on it, it will heal. Option three, a new start is coming, new moon. You know, it's actually the new moon in Aries tomorrow. Um, for anybody watching this right when I post this, <laughs> you guys are going to have, I think, a like good news or some kind of fresh start coming on the new moon, on the Aries new moon in 2020. Definitely option three is your best bet. It's going to be a fresh start, a new beginning, clearing away all of the old crap because with your other two options, bringing love into the situation, that kind of suggests, you know, that there was a lack of love. And then with this healing card, so you guys have, your other options are, I feel they have more to do with past baggage, past traumas or emotional issues, or just like, you know, bullshit happening in your, in your physical reality. So take the advice for these two cards. Option one, bring love into the situation and option two, a time for healing. But Really, I think option three is what you want to be going on, like, forward. That is what you want to be leaning into, the, the new moon energy of option three. Address any old lingering issues with option one or two, but option three is where you want to be going. Absolutely. Okay, pile six. Your first option is... Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. Okay, so option number one is uh, there's definitely a level of unpleasantness around surrounding that. This is facing your fears, confronting a lot of like, you know, to Scorpio energy to me is just that feeling when you just want to cry and also a level of butt hurt. <laughs> like when... I have a really like intimate yet problematic relationship with Scorpio energy. So, you know, if you, you guys might not. So really with when every time the Scorp Scorpio cards come up, I feel like my, my personal bias really comes through here. Um, Cause I'm Scorpio rising with S Pluto in Scorpio conjunct my ascendant. So like right in the first house. <laughs> so, uh and whenever it's Scorpio season or like the Scorpio new moon in Taurus or full moon in Taurus season, I just, it, it's so, it's such a painful energy to me and I feel butthurt and I notice everybody around me is like really oversensitive and, and I get fixated on like watching like videos of, you know, dogs being rescued off the street, like those really horrible, like sad videos. So like Scorpio energy is never pleasant to me and if you guys don't have that, that issues with Scorpio, that's, that's fantastic. Maybe this won't be so bad for you, but, uh, I can't help but think that option number one needs to be worked through, needs to be addressed and it's going to kind of suck, but you need to like move through that. I think you need to deal with option number one before we get into whatever option two and three are. Okay. Option two, nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon. Okay, so option two is still, <laughs> we don't know yet. This is a big, big maybe. And this is actually perfect because I had just said that you need to address option one before we move into option two or three. So I don't think you'll know if option two is good or bad for you or if it is possible or impossible or ideal or not ideal until you deal with whatever issues are plaguing you from option one. So Take care of this, uh, your, your fears here, your fears and your pains and your baggage. Take care of that first. And then I think option two will become clear. It'll become, it, even though right now you can't figure it out and you might be thinking about it, put it aside for now because this option two 
it will become clear for you. It'll be obvious. You So you don't need to worry about trying to figure it out now because down the road, it'll be one, one option will just be natural for you. Option three, full moon in Sagittarius. Look at the bigger picture. So this is pretty auspicious, full moon in Sagittarius, but look at the bigger picture there. There's something that you're not seeing here. You might be fixating on little details or you might be thinking this is like more important than it is. Maybe you're worrying about something a lot or maybe you think some kind of detail is like a really, really big deal, but zoom out. So in order to make a decision on option three, guys, you need to like zoom, zoom out, zoom, zoom out. Big, big perspective. Think, th Go out as far as you need to to get perspective on this. You need to put this into context. You need you need more context for option three. Definitely. I mean, I think option three is probably good for you, but don't rush ahead with it until you get context, more information, and until you can see the entire like abstract picture of it. You need to get a big, big bird's eye view of option three. So your guys' spread is probably, your options are the more, most complicated about than so your guys' spread, your three options are more complicated than the other ones because you have this Scorpio problem. <laughs> and again, not, not shitting on Scorpios because I have like this major Scorpio placement in my chart. So I'm talk, I'm, when I talk about Scorpio energy like this, like I, I also like embody this like very seriously. So, you know, don't get butt hurt, Scorpios. I, I'm talking about myself too. <laughs> so work through your fears. And after you do that, option number two will make itself clear. You won't need to decide on this one. The, like, the course of events will decide for you. You can't decide yet, so don't even bother wasting your energy on it right now. Then option number three, before you rush ahead with it, make sure you get your big picture. Zoom out your perspective as far as you can go, and then you'll be able to figure out how exactly to proceed with option three. So good luck with that, guys. And that's the end of the video. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.